Welcome back, guys. I am here with Mark Cerny, who is the lead system architect of the PS4 and also the game director of NAC. Uh, next to him, Yusuke Watanabe, who is the producer of NAC. So excited to see this game. Thank you for bringing it by. Uh, first of all, we're looking at lots of, lots of physics, lots of particles, lots of, lots of little bits of things coming together here. Tell us about some of the, some of the technology and some of the... Some of the philosophy about Knack as a character. Well, I mean, we wanted to uh, make a character action game, but you know you need to have that core concept which is going to differentiate itself from anything else in the genre. And our idea was that we would have a character that would have a knack mm -hmm. for uh, growth and transformation. And so the idea is that you can pick up parts of the body and incorporate them into your body. Uh, and so Knack grows from being a three foot tall, sort of traditional mascot character, uh -huh. to being a 30 foot tall rampaging monster over the course of some of these levels. The, the sort of the next gen aspect to this is that the character is driven by a custom 5,000 object physics simulation. Okay. And, and that sort of thing is just a whole lot easier to do uh, on PlayStation 4 with the amount of performance you have there. Very cool. So you, you've been instrumental. I mean, in the creation of some memorable characters and games that just have had really memorable characters. I mean, like Spyro, Jack and Daxter, Ratchet and Clank. As your Spyro the Dragon. But yes, that's the one. And um, what makes a good mascot character, and how does Knack sort of embody that? Right? Because you can't just like you can't just make a cartoony character and put them on some platforms. People try that all the time. I, I mean, I think that the, the idea of a mascot was that a character would represent the platform. Mm -hmm. And you know, that worked for the Nintendo Entertainment System back mm -hmm. in 1986. Right. Um, but I think the last system where there was any serious discussion of what, whether there was a mascot or not was mm -hmm. PlayStation 1. And in fact, we decided we weren't going to have a mascot for that, that the care games would be the games and the hardware would be the hardware. So, I mean, to my perspective, um, it's a platform action title in a mm -hmm. fantasy world, and I don't really view it as a mascot in that kind of sense. Right on. So uh, it's kind of been described as a uh, Katamari, Jack and Daxter with a little god of war. And that I hear that, and I like the way it sounds, but kind of break that down for me. Uh, I mean, it's more like Crash Bandicoot for the mm -hmm. gameplay. Um, so you have a, a simple move set that you need to learn it very, very well to get through the game on, for example, hard difficulty. It can be quite challenging. Um, Oh, what, did, what did we just pick up there? Um, so these are um, these are special uh, items. They're randomized. These treasure chests contain something. For example, that's a part of a gadget that can help you uh, in your quest. Um, or you can, um, if you collect enough of these items, you can unlock uh, special characters for a second playthrough. Okay. Anyway, I was saying uh, Crash Bandicoot in one sense, Katamari Damacy because you get so large, mm -hmm. God of War because we're using that kind of approach with the camera, and also the right stick is a dodge, just like okay. God of War. Um, a little bit of those three. Very cool. So, as you're getting larger and smaller, how are levels changing? So, um, each level has a little bit different take on the gameplay. Um, there's uh, levels where you get larger very slowly like this level you're repelling a uh, invasion of goblins and it takes about 30 minutes so you grow in size from the little, little guy to the big guy other levels maybe you're picking up icicles so you get big very fast but then you might go out in the sun and get melted back down to size okay uh, there's a level where you pick up a transparent part since you can drop your re regular parts and go through security systems without triggering them and the like. We're just exploring all the different places that this gameplay can go. Excellent. And I love levels like this one, too, where you, um, as you're growing, you get that sense of scale, and all of a sudden you're just towering over this thing that was an obstacle to you like two minutes ago. And there's just like a really good feeling about well, that's, that. That's the Katamari feel. So here's, uh, here's where you're, um, you're getting transparent, and okay. uh, you can go through the security beams without taking damage. In this level, you can transform between your regular uh, character and uh, this uh, uh, almost invisible, we call him Stealth Knack. Okay, and are there, are there pros and cons to like being Stealth Knack as opposed sure, to Sure, Stealth Knack is tiny. You can mm. see uh, you can see that here, and so he's kind of weak. You can fight as him. Um, sometimes it makes sense if there's laser beams in the room with you that if you touch them, you die as regular Knack. But for the most part, uh, you'll play just as um, is being played right here as you turn into Stealth Knack and go through security systems, go places the larger character can. Very cool. And are there are there other forms to Knack that we're going to see as well? Um, yeah, I mean, we're just every stage of the game, we're trying to take it in a, in a different direction. We should probably ask uh, Watanabe-san if he has any thoughts about Oh, yeah. Is that, is that fine? Uh, yes. Is that fine? Yes. 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 Yes
温かみがあって柔らかさをもうどのように表現するかっていうところでライティングには非常にこだわった絵作りをしましたでまたゲームプレイについてもその直感的な敵とのコミュニケーションをすごく大事にゲームをデザインしましたそれは例えばゴブリンが走ってきて剣を振り上げて振り下ろすっていうすごい簡単な動作をユーザーが覚えて隙をついて攻撃する、まあ、どれをとってもすごくなじみがやすいゲームにはなっているのでどなたにでも楽しんでいただけるゲームになっていると思います。He says it's a fun game. Wow. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> so,、um, objective. This team's being、uh, game is being done in Tokyo.、Uh -huh. um, so we have a lot of teams、uh, getting、um, people from some famous projects like Shadow of the Colossus. And one of the the things that what Nami San is saying is that we've tried to have that same kind of soft world feel.、Mm -hmm. In fact, we have the lead background artist from Shadow of the Colossus who's、oh. been doing our look here. So it's、okay. a very Um, it's a very warm and welcoming feel to the world that you're in.、Uh, for the, the gameplay,、uh, Watanabe san was saying that、um, what you're doing is it, it's, the gameplay is about sort of the intuitive relationship between the player and the enemy and how you're going to go after that enemy. It's not something that you intellectualize as much as you feel what its attacks are, how you get it around it. He's calling it communication、okay. between you and the enemy. That's the basis of the gameplay. And can you.、Uh Can you, or, or Watanabe san, can you, can you kind of、uh, elaborate on that maybe as we're looking at these enemies here? Sure.、Um, well, I mean, you have、um, a couple super moves where you're、um, picking up those yellow crystals, the sunstones.、Uh, but usually what you're doing is you're, you're using a three punch combo and a jump attack to take out the enemies. But the enemies, particularly on the higher difficulty settings, have very narrow windows when you can attack them. Or they may have attacks where you're going to have to dodge or be hit. And when you get to several enemies, it gets geometrically more complex. Which an enemy attack do you respond to? How do you get at that enemy? Of course, right now it's just using a super move and wiping them all out. But、sure. you know, in most of these, these, these setups, you, you have to start thinking what order, how are you going to do it?、Uh, there's about 100 enemy types in the game、wow. that you see. So,、um, and I can picture、yeah. between. Mixing and matching those, and mixing and matching different environmental hazards and different forms、exactly. to knack and sizes.、Yes. You really come up with,、um, with really kind of a deep, it's, it's an action thing, but there's, there's a real thinking kind of puzzly element to it as well, in a way. Yes, yes. There was not really a traditional puzzle, as, that,、yeah. as, as Watanabe san was saying, the communication. So the, the build we brought for、uh, E3 is just four little parts of the game,、mm -hmm. they're each about three minutes long. Now we're in、um, ice caves.、Um, so, this is what you were talking about, where you're picking up these elemental t h a t s right. very quickly. That's right. This is a kind of armor. I mean, story wise,、uh, the goblins have invaded the human territory and somehow they've picked up、uh, very sophisticated weapons like tanks and planes. And your mission is to find out where they came from and how to stop them.、Uh, a、uh, expedition is formed to do that.、Uh, the doctor that invented Knack is there. Knack is there as well.、Uh, there's a couple other characters. Here, here Knack is by himself、uh, and is in these ice caves.、Um, uh, really. A couple different when, goblin types coming up here. When you're, when you're big,、um, your, your attacks are very strong, but as soon as you、uh, get hit a little bit, you get down to regular size and start having to be very careful not to get damaged. Cool. Yeah, just talk us through this part while we watch it because.、Uh, well, okay, another secret room. There's a couple hundred hidden in the game. A、uh, treasure chest again contains a randomized object, so it's a part of a gadget that、um, you're building that will help you in your quest. And、uh, I don't know if you could see it, it went by very quickly. On the right hand side was all your friends that had visited this, this secret room before you. Oh, nice. And if you want to, you don't have to get the item that was in that treasure chest when you opened it. It's randomized. You can get one of the items that your friends picked up there.、Uh, which means if you're trying to build all, a collection of all the parts so you can construct the gadget, Very helpful to have friends who are playing the game、yeah. um, alongside of you. I would, I would imagine, especially with the video sharing capabilities of the PS4 as well. Hey, where did you find this? Oh, here you well, go. Yeah. They're randomized. Oh, okay. So、uh, you, you, you can say where the secret room was, but as far as what comes out, there's about 40 different things that can come out, and some of them、uh, allow you to build these gadgets,、um, like the、uh, right now.、Um, That's a combo meter in the lower right hand side.、Mm -hmm. if, if Knack can damage enemies eight times without getting damaged himself, his attacks step up in power. And you can do that a couple times. The other type of thing you can collect,、uh, we're calling them crystal relics. If you get a set of them, like 20 or 40 of them, 
then you can replay the game as a different character. Oh, nice. So, uh, Vampire Knack, or some character which has a... It is Knack, but it's also uh, a different set of abilities. Very cool. What was the, uh, I saw the R stick come up in a couple uh, different contexts here. Can you tell me when, the, when so that happened? So that's uh, a dodge, mm -hmm. and uh, it's just an, a very fast enemy attack, which is almost impossible to dodge without hitting the stick, and it's just a Q. Okay, cool. And so now we're giant. Yes. This is great. So this is the continuation of the first level that we were looking at. This is, um, it's about 45 minutes start to finish, and that goes, as I said, from being three foot tall to being about 30 foot tall here. Now we're at maybe 20 feet tall. Um, this very tough goblin in a powered suit here, you can now take him out with one punch. Uh, but then the goblins are bringing the big weapons like this tank. Uh, Knack can also, uh, he's gotten big enough, he can pick up cars and things. He can actually pick up tanks and throw them if he gets big enough. Oh yeah, so you're use, as you get bigger, you can use this you environment start using in different this. ways. Yeah, now we're throwing, Yes, we're taking out the helicopters with cars. You also may recall at the very start, we were taking on some uh, some goblins with axes who were larger yes. than Knack, and those were pretty powerful weapons. Um, Is there a moment he, where you come back and you just get to stomp on those guys? Right here. Yes. Right here, so. <laughs> I love it. Let's go around the corner, and here it comes. No, please. <laughs> This is one of our producers playing. He knows where all the secret rooms <laughs> are. Okay, here we go. So these are the guys that were um, pretty tough when we started this stage 30 minutes ago. And at and this point, oh, not so tough. Great. So that's a Katamari Damacy feel. Mm -hmm, for sure. That pretty much no matter how big the enemy is, at some point, it's just small to you. Tell me about the tell me about this art direction and this character design and, and what sort of the influences were there. Well, we started out. Um, we had this idea that you'd be in a city that was being destroyed, and you pick up things like a brick wall would fall down, and you pick up bricks, and we ended up with a character that was like an amorphous blob that would walk around. It's just not very attractive. Um, and we ultimately realized we, we needed to design the character. It needs to be very intentional. So. He might have 5,000 parts, but they are carefully placed. And in the story of the game, he's made out of these um, relics, mm -hmm. uh, remnants of a lost long civilization that the doctors figured out how to add consciousness to. But having that storyline in place allows us to have these detailed parts in very specific uh, shapes and sizes and, then, and design this, this character at every size. This is very cool. And I, you know, I just got to wonder, you know, you've been on the software side of everything for a while now. Uh, when you were sitting down and, and everybody was thinking about the PS4, as, a, as somebody who had been on the software side for so long, what did you want to put in there? What did you know needed to be well, in there for I you? Mean, one of the reasons I was chosen to lead the next-gen effort is I am a developer. I've been doing it for uh, making games for about 30 years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, the idea was that as a developer, you'd understand more about what you could do with the hardware to make it um, easier to use by the developers. I took a little different take on that. I mean, we ended up um, just going out to the development community at large, finding out what they wanted. Um, and uh, the PlayStation 4 that you, say, that you see today is uh, pretty much a direct result of those conversations. Uh, x86 processor, a hard drive in every box, eight gigabytes in, of RAM, uh, unified memory. Those are all things that came out of the development community's requests. Awesome. And it, is that kind of like a reversal of the way it is? Do you? Well, yeah. do, do hardware developers go out to software developers in the beginning? Is that it's, usual? It's not, it's not normally done, no. Uh, no. Um, you know, but PlayStation 1 was in fact Ken's brainchild. He finished it and then he started showing it around. But uh, it was clear that games are getting so complex yeah. and uh, we really need to do something we can to, to bring it all back to the way it used to be in PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2, where you could have a game concept, make that game, get that out, and not have it be so hard. Awesome. Mark, Yusuke, thank you so much for coming by. We're going to leave you now with the trailer for Knack. Check this out. <laughs> invaluable in the fight against the goblins.
capable of explosive growth. We found the Goblin hideout. It's a guardian up ahead. You look fierce. Got less than a minute before the sun melts me back down to size. Stay back. Ah! 